Good morning, everybody. It's once again another great morning here at Scaly Sites. I want to welcome you to the channel. Hope you enjoy the video today. Today we will be talking about Toke Geckos, okay? And this is my big male here, Clyde. And uh, we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about some of his girlfriends that he has and even some of his kids that he just produced for us this year. Um, he is a very well-behaved Toke. He was a Florida wild caught. We're going to be talking about Florida wild caught tokes, their native environment, and uh, where all they come from. So, hope you enjoy the video and uh, have a good rest of your day. Okay, so Toke geckos. We're gonna I'm trying to make this a pretty quick video, just kind of run down on Tokes. There's a lot of information to cover, so we're kind of just gonna jump right into it. But Toke geckos, a bite on Toke geckos. Gecko gecko is their scientific name. Uh, there are some subspecies we'll talk about. They're pretty confusing actually, because I honestly didn't even know the su there were subspecies until I did this program here. Um, our mascot, Scaly Sites mascot, um, is actually a Toke gecko. And uh, so you can see him there. Uh, they're very pretty, very neat and fascinating animals. They're known for their attitude, their aggression. Um, and also they're known for holding their ground when they feel threatened by a predator. So pretty neat mascot. That's why I chose them. Um, and because they're very, very pretty. And that leads us to uh, our male Clyde. Uh, he's kind of cut off there on the video. I don't know if I can fix that there. Um, but yep, Clyde is basically our mascot. When we talk about toke geckos or any animal really, any reptile, I like to talk about their natural environment. Where are they native to? Um, where they're from? Why? Because when we take care of them in captivity, that's going to relate um, to their husbandry, to their care, their environment, their temperature, humidity, things of that nature. Even it gives us a good idea of what they like to eat, their, their prey. Now, here are the two species we were talking about. I'm actually going to change my color here to kind of match. So we'll go, oh, that works, red. So we have the red spotted tokes, and then we have the, what they call the black spotted, which to be honest with you is not even, I didn't even know it was a thing. Regardless of the subspecies we're talking about, their environment looks a lot like what you see below on the left-hand corner. Very dense jungle, um, trees, brush, uh, pretty much anything they could hide behind uh, is where they're going to be. They also do love mangrove swamps. Why? Because mangrove swamps are known for being very, very dense. And also, lots of invertebrates like to hang out around mangrove swamps. Why? Because there's a good food source for invertebrates there and the food chain is very well established there. So the tokes will hang out there to eat those invertebrates. Also, tokes like very large things to hide behind. Why? Because they're a very large gecko. Keep in mind, they're like the second largest gecko being right under Lichianus, the lychee or the New Caledonian giant gecko. So they're going to like uh, large things to hide behind, uh, cre large crevices to pin themselves in between trees to protect themselves from predators. So, yes, that is where they're going to be. Now, where are they at here on the map? This is just a map I pulled off of Google Maps. So, this gets kind of confusing, and I was kind of stressing out about this because different sources said different things, right? So, it was actually, I was looking at the National Museum, the Smithsonian's journals to figure out, because they had a thing on Tokyo geckos for whatever reason. Uh, I saw there, they had, they were either really confused or they were wrong <laughs> about locality of the two different subspecies. Uh, Wikipedia, which of course I don't trust one bit, uh, 
either they were wrong or they were confused. And also Reptile Database just added to the confusion when I was looking into them as well. I went and looked at even research articles. But the problem is most research articles do not specify which subspecies. In fact, I could not find one that specified subspecies of Toke geckos. If there's one out there, please let me know. I'll take a look at it. I'd love to read it. But from what I understood, the Azari, according to the Smithsonian, so that's going to be our red guy right there, okay? The Azari, gecko, gecko, Azari, is only found in Bangladesh or around Bangladesh, all right? Now, I'm going to be a little forgiving and say that you can find them in parts of Nepal and India, but they're going to be around this area, okay? I don't think that is true. Why? Because red spots, I mean, come on, like most toke geckos that we know of have red spots. So what even is a red spotted toke gecko? Maybe the common name or maybe the classification red spots um, is a misconception. I don't know. But they were saying then that most of my sources were saying that the black, black spotted tokes are the ones that are more common that well, the ones we find like in the philippines that we find here in parts of china and thailand but some sources were also saying that no 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 the black spotted toke geckos are only found in parts of northern china and part oh, sorry southern china and parts of northern vietnam so that big black blob that i just put there but they're only found in that area. I don't know which one's which, to be honest. I am was really confused. I think somebody should really figure out what they're talking about, what goes where. But here is the conclusion I came to, okay? I think that Gecko Gecko Azari should actually be under the scientific name Gecko Gecko Gecko. Because I think they're actually the ones that we probably find more commonly in captivity. So these guys, the red spotted tokes, let me get my pen up here should be gecko 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 so those should be those and the azari should be the black spotted geckos so i think they have the scientific name and the spot identification identification messed up i think they have it backwards i think that's just the case why because i think the red spotted ones are the ones that are the most common the ones you find in captivity um, and also the black spotted tokes. Oh, I wish I remember what species it was. I saw on a, so those are going to be going all over there. The, uh, actually they also go in parts. I don't know if they go that far into Papua New Guinea, but they do go in parts of Papua New Guinea. Um, the black, sorry, that was my ring. The black spotted tokes um, are said to look a lot like another gecko species that are known for having really dull coloration, just plain black spots. I'm guessing these ones are the ones that you're going to find in parts of northern Vietnam and southern China. I think that's right. I think that's where you'll find the black spotted, but I think they're the more rare gecko gecko azari. Um, instead of gecko, gecko, gecko. Okay, so switch to those common names, scientific names. That is the conclusion I came to. If you can find a better source to correct me, please do. Um, that would be great. But once again, just check out those habitats you see there. When you make an enclosure, try to mimic those. Um, I'm going to give you a few hints and tidbits on what I did to make my geckos happy in their enclosure. And... Um, maybe even help you there, especially if you wanna breed them. It's very important to make sure that they are comfortable. Um, also, I found feeding behavior is a huge thing when uh, talking about environment. If your environment is wrong in your enclosure, the gecko will not eat, okay? They like it crowded. They like it very crowded. Let's talk about the fact before we get into all the husbandry and everything that this species is invasive it's invasive to a lot of different locations not just florida i have florida wild cots so that's what clyde was that's as i mentioned earlier um it is a species now closely monitored by sites uh, which is convention of international trade and endangered species of wildlife fauna flora uh, invasive to almost anywhere tropical or subtropical <laughs> 
I say that because there have been so many uh, things that I found where they're like, oh, we think we found a sighting here. Oh, there was a sighting there. There's a sighting here, there, and everywhere. Um, but really, the main ones that they're known for, obviously, one is Florida. They're really known in Florida, especially in parts of Miami, the Southern Glades, the Keys, and I think in parts of Western Florida as well, you'll find some established populations. Hawaii, which is a pretty big deal, but Hawaii has a bunch of invasive everything there. Um, Madagascar, which I was surprised about. I think that was... Um, well, Madagascar along with Belize and Brazil, I think were the three that were like, oh yeah, we saw like maybe two here, um, which who knows how or why, probably just from shipments or something from trade from ship to ship, a little gecko sneaks on a cargo ship and then gets stuck in Madagascar where it's not supposed to be. The Caribbean, uh, which I'm not surprised if they're in the Florida, Florida Keys, um, honestly, I'm sure they could figure out their way down to certain portions of the Caribbean. Uh, and I predict that they'll end up being uh, more invasive through parts of South America as they go on. There were also some other sightings in Central America um, as well. So I'm sure they're... I'm sure that them being invasive is going to become a bigger problem in the future. For sure. Um, but where they're native to, they are actually very closely monitored by sites. I think they actually stopped, or they're supposed to be stopping, uh, imports f um, coming from their native habitats so, and the native area. So we can go back. It's going to be, remember, um, basically Southeast Asia. Okay. So they're monitoring that there. But you're still a lot of people up the prices of them, which I don't know why, because there's so many in Florida that Florida wild caught just keep the prices lower. Everybody's like, oh, wild caught to is going to jump up to 70 bucks. No, that's not the case. It's going to be maybe jumped up like five or ten dollars. Um, that being said, they are being more popular. Uh, they are more popular now in captivity than they were. So the price jump probably has more to do with their popularity of being bred in captivity than um, sites restrictions. These are my two wild caught tokays. Uh, Clyde is the one on the right side. Bonnie is the one on the left. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde are actually not together. Clyde is actually with a different female right now, but I bought them together. Um, both were wild caught Florida tokay geckos. And honestly, Florida wild caught, I think, have less of a parasite load uh, when you get them. They're probably easier to treat for parasites and as well as they tend to be less dehydrated when you get them. So not really a bad thing that they're being only captured in the wild in Florida instead of in their natural habitat. Let's talk about husbandry now. So enclosure size is very, 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 very important. Why? Because if you don't give geckos enough space, especially when you're cohabitating, when you have more than one gecko in an enclosure, they will fight. Whether they're male, female, 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 male, male, they will fight. Um, so length, width, height, and inches. If you have just one toke, 18 by 18 by 24 is fine. Two, if you have a pair, male and female, 24 by 18 by 36. And then if you have one male, two females, you can put them in a 36 by 18 by 36. Um, now I do want to just mention briefly, I have it written in my notes later on. If you have a one, two, so if you have a male and two females, you probably should go bigger than a 36 by 18 by 36. They'll get along for the most part, but when the females, uh, are starting to want to breed with the male, they will compete for, uh, egg laying spots, territories. Um, and this can lead to them smashing each other's eggs, uh, biting and nipping at each other. Uh, so, a one and two uh, should either be kept in a larger enclosure with multiple areas for them to lay eggs. Uh, so they kind of have like their pick of the litter and they won't really come into contact with each other. Or you should just do a pair, a one and one. And even on one, you usually only get egg binding after they lay a significant amount of eggs, which is usually like three pairs of two that you guys shouldn't worry about. 
Temp and humidity. So ambient temperature should be 80 to 85. Keep in mind, they're right there on the equator of Southeast Asia. So it's going to be very warm. Um, conversion for Celsius there for you. So you don't have to do that later on. Hot spot, 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. They're going to rarely use their hot spot, but it should be there just in case. Humidity, 65 to 90%. Uh, remember, well, if you haven't seen my Asian vine snake video, go check that out. Why? Because they are found in very similar locations to Tokay geckos. In fact, uh, you can go even as far, or I'm going to go as far to say that juvenile Tokay geckos are a great prey for Asian vine snakes. Um, even adult Tokay geckos would be hard for an Asian vine snake to consume because they're so large and aggressive, but it could be, well, it could be done. Um, so they're going to have very similar temperature and humidity to an Asian vine snake. Other info. Lots of crowded climbing space. Horizontal climbing points. This is just good on their joints. Um, it's just good for the gecko. It lets them relax a little bit more. If you have a nice uh, horizontal log across their uh, or PVC pipe across their habitat, that would be great. UV light. Uh, once again, they're actually nocturnal, so they're not going to be using a basking spot a lot. They're not going to take advantage of UV light a lot. You can get away without UV light if you supplement with D3, uh, but I would recommend the UV light. Enclosed walls. If you have a gecko in an open tank, they will be stressed out of their minds where they probably will not eat very well for you. Okay, you're going to have to force feed them. So if you enclose the walls, they feel like they are protected. They don't feel like predators can come at them from different angles, right? Closing the walls lets them feel confined and safe like they are in a good hiding spot, in a good location. So keep the walls enclosed on three sides and then leave one side open for you to view them from and enjoy them as well as for you to access and clean them and feed them. Nighttime temperatures, just keep it above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And obviously they're insectivores, all right? They're not going to eat Pangea or Repishi or anything like that. Some people give that to their baby tokays. Uh, my baby tokays don't even touch it. So uh, that's that. There's Bonnie and Clyde again in a PVC pipe. PVC pipes are very good. If you want to keep it clean and sterile, I definitely rec recommend a bunch of PVC pipes. It can be like hot glued in the enclosure or you can spray foam them in. Um, and then there's one of the baby toe case that I have one of the little guys. Um, they're doing great. I have them on roaches and mealworms. Big question we get all the time. Is a toe cake gecko male or female? It's actually very easy to tell. You don't have to do anything fancy. That is a female right there. Notice, let's get a pen out here. Notice these grooves that are found on these scales. So I'm going to look at this V shape right here. Notice the, these pores that I'm clicking on. You can see them all along there. Those are what they look like. Those are our femoral pores. Those are what they look like on a female. Uh, that's what they look like on a male. So this is actually a picture of Clyde. Um, so you can see his pores look like they have something inside of them, right? So male. Female also, notice these little spurs right there, characteristics of a male, and she doesn't really have any. Okay, she's missing them. So, male and female. There you go. Take a good look at that. That's how you can tell them apart. It's actually very easy. You can actually sex them at a very young age. Random observations. So this is just kind of our wrap-up page. Obviously known for their territorial behavior. We mentioned that. Juveniles have been observed conditioning their stomachs by eating parents' fecal material. That sounds gross, but they do it, and I think it's kind of cool. One male with multiple females is fine. Uh, multiple females in a confined area will fight. Competition for egg laying is often observed. We mentioned that. Both male and females are good parents. So instead of incubating the eggs, just leave them in there. They actually will lay on the eggs and regulate the temperature themselves. Um... Sometimes you can get kind of crappy parents, whereas you do want to incubate them. I left my babies in with the female, um, and the female did do too much with them, but they hatched out and they were fine. Um, they will lay them according to the temperature gradient that they feel they'll be okay at. Uh, so usually it's around 80 degrees. Don't be alarmed to odd noises at night. Your male gecko just wants a friend. So the male geckos are very vocal, and that's how they get their name Tokay, because they go Tokay, Tokay, or Kokay, Kokay, and they'll 
make weird noises and clicks and chirps trying to attract females. So if you hear a weird noise in the middle of the night, that's just them being them, their active selves and uh, looking for a mate or a female. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, it did end up being pretty long, a lot longer than I really wanted it to be. But hey, we covered a lot of information on Tokyo Geckos. If you have any questions on Tokyo Geckos, feel free to let me know. As I mentioned, uh, some of the sites I use for this information would be like Reptile Database, Wikipedia, and some other random sources. Um, I didn't really use most of this stuff with my own stuff. So uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. If you haven't checked out my other videos, go ahead and check them out. We had a video on Asian vine snakes last. And um, comment and see what other videos should we make. Maybe we should make a, make a rattlesnake video. Uh, day geckos. I just got day geckos in. Blue tongue skinks. I used to keep a lot of blue tongue skinks. We can maybe talk about them. Uh, we could just talk about colubrids as a group of snakes, as the trash can group. Uh, we can talk about those as well. I don't know. Just let me know. We'll talk about them, and uh, we'll have a good time. So, once again, thanks for watching, and have a great day.